My name is Victor Tiffany. I'm the founder of the Bernier Bus Strategy. This is a presentation to show that Bernier Bus is not the problem that Democrats face next year, that they have a larger problem of swing voters who literally decided the election in 2016, and they're going to do it again in 2020. Let me screen show so I or screen share so I can show you the polling that I'm talking about. We begin with this is a an episode of the Bernie or Bus television show on YouTube. This is a billboard we put up during the Democratic National Convention in Philadelphia. Nominate Sanders or lose in November. It was bluster. It was fear mongering. We had no polling to back up that threat. Now we do. Beginning with 2017 polls of Bernie supporters. How did they vote in the general election? This is based on 4,226 burners. You can see 78% of them voted for Hillary Clinton. 12% of these Trump support of these Bernie supporters voted for Trump. That's not Bernie or bust. That's Bernie or Trump. That's 50% more than Bernie or Buster's. That's down here, voted for other candidates. That's voting for Jill Stein. 2% stayed home. That could be Bernie or Bust. They, we never advocated for people to stay home. We wanted people to vote. But the media kept talking about Bernie or Bust as people staying home because they never went to our website. So that adds up to 22%, right? 78% supported Hillary Clinton. 22% did not. This group right here, the Bernie or Trumpers, we're gonna come down here and click on this. You can see this is the margin of victory of, for Trump in the three states Hillary Clinton needed to win. These are the Bernie or Trumpers. Clearly, they caused Hillary Clinton to lose. We didn't know about these people. There's no claim of responsibility on their part. There's no Bernie or Trump website. There's no organization behind them. They just did it. They're like a force of nature. I think of them as dark matter. They weren't there. We didn't know they were there until they were discovered by this polling. So that's what we see there. And we uh, are concerned about them because they're still here. I know you're probably thinking, well, that was 2017 with all this uh, you know, impeachment and everything that Trump has done, maybe they've changed. So this is a poll from April of this year. I'm gonna put links to all this in the video description below. Emerson College poll from this month, that was April, 26% of those who support Bernie in the primaries and caucuses would support Trump over Elizabeth Warren. So apparently these people are still here. Here's another poll from November. Two thirds, get that out of the way, two thirds who support Bernie will support Warren, which means one third will not. Now, one third is considerably more than the 26% over here. This is a small sample size, and the margin of error on this particular poll is around plus minus 10%. So that's somewhere between 23% and 29%, given the margin of error. This one doesn't list the margin of error or the sample size. But clearly, what they're saying, what they're not saying here, but you can read between the headlines, which is a third of Bernie supporters will not support. Warren. So this would include the Bernie or Trumpers and the Bernie or Busters, right? Because there's fewer of Bernie or Busters than there are the Bernie or Trumpers. Here's another poll, also in November. Follow, uh, let me see, the least likely of support, of least likely to support the nominee of the top candidates were Bernie supporters with 61% supporting, they're very likely to support the nominee. That means 39% are not necessarily likely. Now, that's still more than the 33% who would not support Warren. Again, the language here is likely to support the nominee. Maybe someone will support Buttigieg, perhaps because a Bernie supporter might be gay, and Buttigieg represents a uh, backup vote for someone like that. At any rate, the concern is that these people caused... Hillary Clinton to lose last time, and they're going to do it again. And let me just show you what I'm talking about here. We are in a tight 
race. It's going to be a tight race next year if Trump can be uh, defeated. In the post-war period, incumbent presidents have run for re-election 10 times, seven winning, three losing. The winners all have strong job markets going for them, like Trump does. So that's my point here. It's going to be a close contest. And if anyone's going to defeat Donald Trump, it's going to be somebody who doesn't have this concern behind him. These guys, the uh, Bernier Trumpers. No, I went the wrong way here. Let's go back. Can't get rid of this. These folks. This one third of supporters who won't back Warren or other candidates. That's what they're showing further down here. Let's see. I think there we go. Still don't have that. Actually, it's over here. All right. I can show you just very quickly here. There's miss, uh, information missing. Oh, here we go. Come on. Here we go. Dissatisfied. Again, 33% with Biden. Fewer for Williamson, about the same for Harris. She's gone. Bernie supporters, most Bernie supporters, or I should say more Bernie supporters would back Gabbard if she were somehow the nominee because the dissatisfaction with her is the lowest. And that makes sense because she's the one who backed and endorsed Bernie Sanders in 2016. So as long as we have good economic conditions, what we're saying here is conditioned upon this fact that unemployment is low and that means the contest would be close at best and Bernie has the greatest amount of natural leverage built-in leverage covering from coming from those who will not support the nominee just like a whole bunch of Hillary Clinton's party unity my ass supporters did not vote for Obama but we did not have a stable economy the economy was crashing it was a different context. In this context that we have now, with strong job markets, the only candidate who can defeat Trump are those who will include those Bernier Trumpers and the Bernier Busters, the 22% who did not vote for Hillary last time. They're still there, and that's our point. And finally, from our website, silence on this issue is not an ethical option. No less now than in the time of Paul Revere, this warning must be delivered by anyone who is serious about defeating Donald Trump. Anyone in the media, anybody, any celebrity with an audience, if you're serious about defeating Donald Trump, you've got to get the word out that under current economic conditions, only, only Bernie Sanders can defeat Donald Trump. That's just the nature of his built-in inherent Bernie or trust, Bernie or Trump leverage. Thank you for listening.